And she said, I don't need anything. I just need an empty jar. Lady, I can handle the empty jar. So she collects all these empty jars. I don't know what her kids thought, but I thought maybe mom's flipping out. Let's do it. So she said, bring the jars in. And then she was told to close the door. Just her and her sons. And because of her faith, she did exactly what she was told. Sometimes God can tell you to do something that doesn't really make sense. Ever had that happen? You're going to say, I don't think this is a solution. You're facing a trial or tribulation. I've been down there many times. <clears throat> and you pray for an answer. And then something happens. And you're thinking, well, this isn't the way it's supposed to work out. But I've heard anything this summer. Don't tell God how to run your life. And don't let your prayer life be, which mine has been in the past at times, giving God unsolicited advice of how he ought to run the world. God does not need your advice. In fact, he doesn't want it. He's in the business of telling you what to do. Many a time when I was a child, my mother would say to me, these are my mom, you know the big mess you're in, Bob? You caused it. You are your own enemy. Why don't you just learn to stop and listen and pray? And I wouldn't do that. Remember the show The Honeymooners? Ralph Brandon. I like that guy, Ralph. That's a good name. <laughs> so anyway, Ralph Brandon, I've been watching a Honeymooner special. Uh, well, it's really, really old. Cool. So I've been watching videotapes for a Because we haven't done it. It's going to be next week. It's going to be great. And Ralph would get in a big dilemma. And what would he say? Me and my big mouth. Remember when he would say that? <clears throat> All the time. And then, of course, at the end, Alice would be that compassionate and always say, the baby, you're the greatest. But many a time, our actions that are the result of putting God aside and running ahead of God. You can't run ahead of God. you got to run with him. Believe me, I'm an expert. If you want to how to mess up, well, trust me, I can give you a book. I want to study on how to mess up and not listen to God. But if you listen to God, that's what she did. The request may have been a strange command. Why not borrow jars with something in it? The kids might have said, Mom, are you sure you want empty jars? Well, don't worry about that. We'll take the empty jars. God will take care of the rest. Just like when you're listening and praying and you feel led to do something, follow instructions and God will let you know what to do. Well, she did one thing, she did not question the command. She didn't say back to the prophet, empty jars, are you crazy? I didn't come in for some stupid advice like that. I gotta get out of debt. What am I gonna say? Set up a booth and say, come, get some empty jars, nothing in them, would you buy them? <laughs> Who would do that? You may feel sorry for her to put something in the jar because she's crazy. But anyway, she doesn't challenge it. Our faith is what we need. She trusted God and allowed God to supply her need. Our limitations. If we say God doesn't answer prayer right away, maybe it's because we don't have enough faith. What kind of God do you believe? An itty bitty God can't do something? Or do you believe in a great, powerful God that can do great things? Well, she got the jars ready. They're all there. She's got the one jar, and she does this strange thing. Think about this logic. You have one jar of oil. Bring me a jar, and I'll pour the oil into that jar. Well, what's going to happen after you do? What are you going to just keep? That's it. You just exchange jars. Nothing happened. And so she, what did she do? Well, she starts to pour the jars. And something happens. And point three tells us, because of her faith, she received a great blessing. Throw out the logic. Throw out the earthly intelligence. God is not limited by our earthly river. The movie, Oh God, with George Burns, people have mixed feelings about that. It's an old movie. George Burns was an old man. Like but there's a scene in that that I remember that spoke to me, and I think it's a great scene. He's there when you call, he snaps his finger, goes from night to daytime. That's impossible. But he just does it like that. 
Now you can say, that's impossible. You can't be daylight at nighttime. But God can do whatever he wants. If he wants to open up the Red Sea, he can open up the Red Sea. I had a, a, a conversation with a guy on an airplane one time. Uh, I've been known to start conversations. And I do it very frequently. Uh, we went out and meet the other night with a guy from Comcast. And my wife, she puts up with me like she does. I'm in a, in a conversation with a cable guy. <laughs> well, I mean, it was really for her best interest because I wanted to get a good deal for cable. <laughs> <laughs> so I always have these conversations. So on an airplane, guy says, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a minister. What they lean back if we have a disease? <laughs> what you doing? So he said, whoa, one of those, huh? And I go, and I went, like, yeah, one of those. <laughs> and it's a four-hour flight. So. <laughs> Come on. 